piece on all the key committees as well. Laura, say a few words. Thank you, Julie. Well, please. first and foremost, as I told you, Felix, if there's a person who I personally admire and have tremendous respect for, it's your wife. And I think while you were in prison, Forget you, you, <laughs> you have to be proud of, of the family and the legacy that you have in your wife as well, because she was your best spokesperson. And the tremendous work that she did, even at personal cost, as well as with the other spouses, it speaks volumes to her courage and absolutely to you as well. So I have to give credit where credit is due. And, and she was that. an absolute backbone to you. And, and even in, in exile, I know she is still by your side and, and she deserves all the credit as well. So to be that as well, a big hug wherever she is. And, and she knows my appreciation as does my whole office for her. But before anything, I do have to echo uh, as well from, from the House, I do have to, but in the Senate, our priority remains the Reina, which also has been a key, a key bipartisan issue that the Senator has led with Senator Menendez. We have support, again, in a bipartisan fashion, because if not, we wouldn't get anything done in Congress, unfortunately. But also, I think one of the main issues that Senator Rubio is focusing on right now when it comes to Nicaragua, it's TAP and DR, and the fact that Nicaragua is still a part of that, uh, of that free trade agreement. And that's something that we need to continue to, to closely monitor, at least from our office. But I guess now that you mentioned, for example, all of the repression that's going on against the Catholic Church, my question to you is how do you see the Vatican actually supporting these movements that, that actually are speaking up against the repression that's going on in, in Nicaragua? We have a Pope who's actually <coughs> also from our continent, you know, and it's the first Latin American Pope that we have. Yet, is do you see that there, there needs to be more done? We have, as you said, we have a ton of uh, members of the clergy imprisoned and a lot in exile as well because they were absolutely pushed out of Nicaragua. How do you see the Catholic Church playing a role in this? Great question. And I want to say a shout out to, uh, thank you, Casey. Thank you, Cam. And she's not here because she's working down downstairs, I guess. Let's give a big applause to Scylla, who puts all this stuff together for us. Thank you, Scylla. I'll allow you to speak and say a few words. <laughs> yeah, I'll respond directly to these very, very important questions. So, your questions on unity. First, let me say that Nicaraguans are not well known for our capacity to build consensus. <laughs> we are a highly divided society. It's a country that just had a civil war. Just imagine how divided is an industrialized country, I will say the name of that country, very polarized that had a civil war over a century ago. Yeah. <laughs> so what about a country that had a civil war over 20 years ago? Yeah. How easy it is to make unity with someone that just a few years ago was on the side of those who killed your parents, who tortured you, who stole your property, but now they opened their eyes and now they're in, in our side, but there are open wounds. So that's the first point. It's a, sometimes I, I hear the word of unity, but there's a human dimension to that. Let me say that I come from the position, my, my, my Catholic tradition of nonviolence uh, pushed me to say something that I, I, I had been highly criticized. My first phrase out of the plane, as you may see it on, on the news, was I hold no hatred against those who torture me. I do not want revenge, I want justice. And I'm, I'm so happy to have Ambassador Maxfield here. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah, ambassador yeah. to the audience. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. It, it takes guts to do what you do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, it's very hard to be sitting on the same table. Because the Sandinista regime is not killing people since 2018. I had two of my cousins' cousins disappear. We never got their bodies back from Hinotega. I was, it really changed my life. They stole our property. And the debate is, should we make a position of only those of us who've been anti-Sandinista for our entire life? or do we build a comprehensive movement? But uh, as Alex can testify to that, many of the kids that were actually to the street at some point were supporters of the Sandinista movement. So it needs to be uh, you know, open-minded. So, so just, just to, to highlight that. And I think that the polarization of the world and the United States in particular also has permeated into the Nicaraguan movement. So a lot of Nicaraguans believe that siding with a more conservative uh, approach to politics is probably the best way and other Nicaraguans are receiving support, I will say, for progressive movements around the world that want their own version of the Nicaraguan opposition. It's, co it's fair game. That's how global politics works. So they have their poster child of the progressive movement. I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying that's a fact. So when I hear Washington saying unity, unity, it's very hard to attain that. So my 
response will be yes, we're going to get our shit together. You need, we need to be reasonable. <laughs> in the sense that, excuse my French, uh, that needs to, be, needs to be the critical mass of those that are reasonable, of those who have a proposal, who those who actually represent uh, people in Nicaragua. Because it's very hard to say, no, you know, we have a unity of five people, but we need five more, five more. And certainly you, you're going to have an assembly of 50, 30, 60 national leaders. I'm sure there is, sounds beautiful, but it's very, very hard. So we need to, to just uh, be more pragmatic. That yes, we can get coordination, not full unity, around those that, that have, I think, critical mass. And yes, if that's the proposal, I can guarantee that we are united. I can guarantee that we're having close conversations, close coordination with the key leaders of the Nicaraguan opposition. It's a diverse movement, but I need to say to the implementers who are making you know, very nice money, I don't have anything against consultants, I was one myself, <laughs> that try to get them, you know, um, their projects uh, by building this massive uh, uh, um, infrastructure is not reasonable at this point. We need to get something fast, nimble, concrete, and effective. And yes, we'll do it. Uh, what what uh, to do? I think that the financial system, it is unacceptable that the Central American Bank of Integration continues to fund and channels massive amount of resources to the Nicaraguan regime. I think that if there's something that can be done, is basically uh, uh, bringing the international financial system accountable. It's unacceptable that the IMF is, is just writing a report that basically presents a, a, a fake picture of the of the Ortega uh, regime. So so let me give a little bit more context in DC speak. So when we wrote the NICA Act, the last point of contention was a waiver on humanitarian ground for the IFIs. Who's IFIs? The International Financial Institutions. Thank you. Yeah, he's getting very Washington. I know. Yeah. It's very <laughs> Washington. Washington yeah. Garden. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sorry. Now, so we 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 decided to put in the waiver because we didn't. The thinking was let's not hurt the people. Right, so if there's things going in for the people, that should be allowed. But we knew that the problem with the waiver is that you can drive a Mack truck right through it, right? <laughs> so that's what they've done. So the World Bank, the IDB, and the IMF, where we have significant influence, have loaned Ortega about 1.2 billion over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So that needs to stop. Now, Cabe, which is the Central America Integration Bank, we have zero leverage in the United States government, we're not involved in Cabe, it's, it's its own regional thing. Uh, now, uh, Chairman Menendez, Chairman McCall, they've sent out letters to the other countries of Cabe saying, hey, you guys need to use your leverage to knock it out. We'll see how far they get. My recommendation has been the U.S. can section the leadership of Cabe, so not Cabe as an institution, but the individuals of that leadership, section them for indirectly supporting the Ortega regime that is within the law, uh, within the within the NICA Act and within the uh, legislation. And that's my third point, Rena said. I think it's an impossible toolkit. And uh, recently, I understand that the UK also provided some resources to Cabe. So talking to allies, I think it's very important to have a multilateral approach. I think that if we, if uh, the uh, addressing the Ortega regime from a, a strictly just perspective is not smart, you know, that's it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of romanticism around the, mm -hmm. what Sandinismo meant in the 1980s, and they're playing that very effectively. Uh, this is not something directed to the U.S., but more broadly, I think that we need to do a lot of work in South America with South American governments. We need to work with Central America uh, uh, as well. And I think that there's also issues that should be tackled through South, so the Army Southern Command as well. Uh, I think that the army is no longer part of the solution. There is a big problem here in Washington. There are people who are lobbying for the Nicaraguan army, looking at the army as a, I understand that theoretically speaking, I was a secretary general of defense ministry, by the way, so I'm in my past life. Um, and I understand, I work for that army as a civilian. I work with NDU, I work with IMED funds. I was here in the Pentagon as a point of contact when we also sent troops to Iraq. Uh, in the reconstruction of Iraq. It was a different army. Ortega, the first thing he did in 2007, he sent to retirement to all the generals and the colonels that we have worked so hard to train at Orbani, for example, with a new approach uh, to a democratic uh, um, uh, military for times of peace that understood what civilian control was. We uh, worked very hard with the government of Spain, with Chile, at the time, then Minister Bachelet, a great friend, who eventually became the president of Chile, was incredibly helpful in actually training uh, uh, um, uh, the Nicaraguan army in the democratic approach. The new army has nothing to do with the army 
that some of our friends at Southcom have in, in, in their head. So I think that also that's another point of, of, of pressure. Uh, of, very good, very good. Carolina, thank you so much for being here. I forgot to, to mention you. I've got a, a whole lot of questions, many index cards of questions, but I wanted to turn it over over to you because uh, we have we have such a, a wonderful uh, group of attendees to come to our Meet the Leaders of Latin America series. These guys are, are knowledgeable, so I'm gonna turn to you. Ambassador, I don't know if you wanna start the, the ball rolling in English or Spanish, whatever you want um, pleasure. Um, so I just wanted put to- put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to thank you to, for the outstanding support for Nicaragua. Not from now, but from all your life, since the day I was watching the news with Eliane, yes. <laughs> back in the days, oh, wow. yeah. a very young woman committed to the Nicaragua cause. Yeah. She she's, uh, she is our she has received the 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 highest Nicaraguan recognition, which on. is the, the Ruben Darío yeah. Ruben Darío yeah. national yeah. national recognition, right? Yeah. Um, I just wanna I just wanna let you know that Nicaragua is a divided country, but we are working on it. The, the, the thing that we have Felix here sitting with me, a former ambassador of the dictatorship that denounced the dictatorship at the Organization of American States. Um, this means something. We are trying to build a different Nicaragua from people from every, from every sector, from private sector, from, from public institution. We are trying to build something and we're just asking for help to build a new Nicaragua. A Nicaragua that works, not a perfect Nicaragua, because, but a Nicaragua that works with democracy, with institutions, and with with respect for for the basic uh, uh, foundations of democracy. That's what that's what we want. A country that we all can get along, that we can live in a country. Like for instance, I have a I have a different position with my government. Hey, Sean. I should I should be able to go back to my country, but no. They said they, they were going to kill me, not put me in jail. They were going to kill me if I go back to my country. So what I'm saying, we need to build a country, help us to do that. And I thank Felix and I thank Jose, uh, Alex. He paid a price, they both pay a price. Freedom is not free. And they have paid a price for democracy. And we are trying to build a new Nicaragua and seems difficult, como dicen los cubanos, no es fácil, <laughs> but it's not impossible, but it's not impossible. Thank you, Ambassador, thank you.